Hey friends. So by this time I have realized, well, I've tried and failed to upload the video that I captured a couple of days ago. Um, unfortunately, the internet connections here are just not fast enough and I, I keep having trouble uploading anything to YouTube. So what I've decided is that um, I'm going to treat this more like a diary and these videos are going to go up after I'm back in Seattle, so after I'm in a place where I can actually upload them. So you're going to get this news about 30 days later, um, but uh, you're going to get it anyway, and I think that's the important part. So I've now got about 16 hours, 16 and a half hours before my surgery. I'm in the hospital now. This is my room. Um, it's 4.15 p.m., and my, my surgery is tomorrow morning at 8.30. Um, so... I'm just slightly nervous. I like to I like to think that I'm I'm keeping it together pretty well. I uh I mean I can show you the hotel or the hospital room. Did I say hotel earlier? I meant hospital. So this is the the room. There's the bed. The bed is gonna be my home for the next week. And I've got a bit of a view outside, but um, mostly it's of a building that's right there. Although I can see the rice paddies off in the distance when I get up and, and look out there. And it's really pretty. It's really pretty out there. This is a beautiful place. It's really different. Um, you know, I've been to a lot, of, a lot of places in the world. I've been to Japan and I've been to... My heart goes out to everyone in Japan, my goodness. Breaks my heart. Um, I've been to Japan, I've been to Denmark, obviously, Sweden, the UK. I've been all over the US, I've been to Canada, I've been to Mexico, and I never fail to be impressed by the, the unique aspects of a, of, a, of a country. You know, this place, Thailand, it's not like anywhere else in the world that I've been. And um, I like that. I like being exposed to different different places and the people here there you know there are other girls here that have um, seen Saporn or are going to see Saporn um, after me and most of us are staying at the same hotel um, so it's been really great to just sort of hang with them um, hear about their stories and you know they give all sorts of advice and uh, and uh, they tell you know be prepared for this and be prepared for that and um, basically what I'm coming away with is that um, tomorrow is going to be tomorrow morning the surgery is going to be easy I'm going to be asleep I'm not going to remember a thing uh, I'm not really going to experience the surgery at all because I'm going to be under anesthetics anesthesia um, but after that I'm going to have um, I'm going to have to recover from being on the anesthesia. Hopefully I won't throw up too much. Um, hopefully I won't have any, you know, irregularities. Like my heart won't do anything crazy while I'm being operated on. Or my asthma won't flare up. Um, so, and then I just get to sit still. Or lay still, excuse me. I can't even sit up for an entire week. So I anticipate getting pretty, um, pretty tired of laying on that bed, that bed. Uh, but I have my computer and I have some magazines and I have some music and I brought some DVDs so I'm going to be fine. Um, I have been <laughs> trying to work on my meditation and, uh, and just practice being still. Um, I guess I'm a person that likes to go, 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 and so stillness is is a big deal for me. You know, it's kind of crazy to think that in 16 hours my, my body is going to be changed forever. Like, I knew that. I knew that that's why I came here. But now that it's sinking in, it, that this is happening in less than a day, you know, tonight is the last night I'm going to go to sleep with a penis. 
the last night. I feel like I should do something to commemorate the occasion, like uh, <laughs> like put my dick in something, like a, a Twinkie or I don't know, but I think the time for that has passed. I think it's too late for me to do anything silly like that. So obviously, it wasn't that important to me, or I would have done, done something like that earlier. And I think any big change is scary. Um, I have my little Thai juice. It's like it's like a orange juice with vegetables added. It tastes very sweet, though. It tastes like a pulpy high C. I'm being distracted. I don't know what the next week is going to be like. And I suppose even being in this place where I've known that I, I wanted this for a long time, well, <laughs> I guess I should say that most of my life, you know, I've wanted a vagina, but I haven't wanted to get surgery to get one. I wanted to snap my fingers and it would be just there. So to actually do this, to actually take my body into my own hands and submit myself to these professionals to, to do their thing, it's intimidating. And I know that if I'm tense or if I'm anxious, then that, that tension is going to manifest in my body and it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep me from healing as well as I could. So what I'm, what's on my mind right now is just peace. You know, now it's just a matter of waiting because there's nothing I can do to stop this unless I were to just throw up my hands and say, stop, I don't want to do this. And um, I'm not going to do that. You know, no matter how scared I get in the moments when I'm getting wheeled on the on the operating table when I'm being wheeled into the room and I have, you know, there's going to be all sorts of stuff going through my mind, probably doubts and fears and, um, and anxiety, but also anticipation. Um, no matter how bad it gets, I'm not turning around. I've worked too hard for this. Through my journey, I have, um, I've dug up a lot of memories of my life being younger and feeling things that I couldn't put into words, but uh, I know now that it was gender dysphoria, that it was wishing my body was different. And the hard part has been realizing these things and doing something about it. Because we, we live in a world that uh, I don't think wants us. But I don't give a shit what the world wants. I know who I am. I'm exactly who I want to be. I am exactly what I want to be, and nothing more. But it is stressful, you know, to know that my skin's gonna be cut open and bits rearranged and everything, and uh, it's, it's not trivial, it's a big deal. I had to have the approval of many psychiatric professionals to, uh, to give their consent that the doctor can do this without fear that I'm gonna be worse off for it. But, you know, I think the strongest motivator that I can think of has been in the last few months after I met my girlfriend, Elena, 
Um, you can see some of her on, on my channel, I think, and on Tranny Star Galactica. Um, after I met her, she's like the first girlfriend I've had as a woman. You know, the first one that I have cared about on an emotional and physical level equally. And, um, and there are certain things that I want to do with her physically that I haven't been able to. And though the, the confusing and, and negative feelings coming out of, of those experiences have been, to me, a huge confirmation that I need to go through with this. You know, I'm 28, I'm not getting any younger. Next week I'm gonna be 30 years old, I'm sure, because that's just how fast time goes. And um, the older I get, the more my health is going to decrease and the higher risk it will be for me to go under anesthesia. And the, the, the less of my life that I will have, the less time I will have to share myself, to share my body with my lover in the way that I want to. So in that sense, no matter how hard this turns out to be, it's going to be worth it. And I know that I'm really lucky to be able to do this now. I'm really lucky. Of course, yeah, there are, there are girls that get to do this younger than me, and, and trans guys that get to do this younger than me. But I, I don't know, that's their stories. They, we all have our own stories. But I just want to remind everybody that's, that identifies as transgender that um, for me, the path has never been clear. Not until, you know, not until recently. Not until I had been doing this for three years already. You know, most of that time it's been trying to sort out my feelings. I, I, I was just so afraid to, to be open and honest with myself about my feelings, about my gender. I feel like this transition has been like walking through a mist, like a foggy day. And uh, and with each little step, the fog clears just a little tiny bit. But at the beginning, it was like, it's like I could barely see this far in front of my face. I had no idea what was gonna happen to me or to my family or, or to the people in my life, if I would ever see them again after I told them. And it's just every step I've taken, you know, there have been so many just, just, just admitting, just admitting that I had to think about this was the biggest, hardest one, you know, that, that required me to lose my, my relationship or to, to call it off. So where was I? Every step has been hard. Um, admitting to myself that I, that I needed to think about my gender, that I needed to really think about it and figure out how I felt. And then meeting people, meeting trans people, making that first appointment to talk to a therapist, even finding a therapist to talk to. Um, saying, saying the words, I have gender identity issues. There are the hardest words for me to, 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 to speak out loud. It was so hard. And then, you know, all the other stuff. 
going out into public dressed as Samantha, dressed in women's clothes, um, buying makeup, buying clothes, buying shoes. hormones <laughs> and it's been a big it's been a it's been a long three years for me a hard three years and um, you know I used to do martial arts when I was younger and uh, everyone everyone looks at the black belt in martial arts they go oh those, those guys they're the best. They're they're they've achieved the highest rank that's possible. You know they've they're they're the they're the best. And um, well, I never achieved black belt. I was I was this close, but never got there. I knew people that achieved black belt. And when they got there, the instructors sat them down and said, "Now look, you've made it." to black belt but this is not the end of your journey this is only the beginning and I feel the same way right now even though everyone or so many people look at this surgery as the end of the road it's just the beginning you know I've got to spend a year focusing on dilation and um, I can't have sex for like six months and um, who knows what else who knows what else I um, have to deal with like I have the rest of my life to worry about you know have all my documents changed um, you know maybe I'm gonna get other face surgery and um, there's a lot ahead. So, I want to thank you all for, for hanging out with me this whole time and, and seeing me through to the beginning of my journey. That's my dinner that just arrived. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go eat. And um, then I'm going to relax, and then I'm going to get an enema, and then I'm going to go to sleep. And when I wake up, I'm going to get on that table, and then I'm going to get knocked the fuck out. And I'm going to wake up with a bunch of stuff inside me. And probably have a huge headache. I probably have to pee like a motherfucker. And then I can just survive. So you'll all you'll all make it here if you want it and if you survive. So I'm gonna leave you with that. <sighs> Next time I talk to you, I'm gonna be on the other side. So say a prayer for me if you can. Um make it retroactive so that I get it when I need it. <laughs> and I'll see you next time.